Hello, Stephanie Toman here. Uh, this is a video that's going to look at the area of referencing. Really important for long documents, etc., to understand how to manipulate and use some of these features. So this is uh, within the syllabus of the accredited ICDL Advanced Word Processing Qualification. And it's also here if you come across it on YouTube and you want to um, have a look and see how to use some of these features. Hopefully it will be helpful to you not just at, uh, at university, but maybe in other areas too. So you can see by the slide what it's going to cover. Um, and table of contents is probably one of the areas that might be most useful to you. But have a look at some of the others, because you never know. They might come up uh, and you need to, to be looking at them. Anyway, enjoy. Thanks for watching. Bye. OK, so we're going to start with opening up the footnotes and then notes and citations. We're going to cover that area there. OK, on each of the documents that I use, I am putting a footnotes uh, sort of like a blurb about footnotes like it is here. It's a formal way of documenting sources for quotations and about them being automatic, etc. So I'm going to demonstrate them together, the sort of ways that the syllabus and the exam would be expecting you to use them. So if we put a footnote um, onto the word tomb, go to the references tab and all of your footnote features are all in this little group here. So to insert a footnote, click on the insert footnote and then you can type something. Notice it's come up with a footnote A. All right, go to the Kings, let's put in another footnote, click on there. It's now got a B next to the Kings and down here, I'm going to type something else in. And then um, let's put one after mask as well. Insert footnote. So insert footnotes is one of the features you may be asked to use in the um, syllabus on the exam. Another thing is that it may be asked you to change these footnotes, the formatting option. So in order to do that, if you right click on them and you go to the notes options. So note options is also available here. So you can get the same place using a little launcher there. And there's your note, these are your note options. And this is another way of changing them. OK, so I'm going to do it on a right click, note options, see what I mean, exactly the same, and drop these down and we're going to change them to a one, two, three format to the whole document. If you find you click insert, it'll put in another one. You need to make sure that you apply and then you can see they've changed and they've also changed in the document. If you delete this, it won't let you, you try and delete it. What you have to do is you have to delete the little reference number there to take the reference out, the footnote out. So that's how you delete the footnote. If you want to convert a footnote to an endnote, then if we go for mask number two and this one, just right click on the two and we convert to endnote, it's gone now to the end of the document. So endnotes are on the end of the document the footnotes are on the page they are connected to okay so we've done a few things there we've inserted a footnote we converted a footnote to an endnote and we've removed a reference footnote and we've still got one left we converted uh, the formatting from a capital a b c to one two three okay other areas that you could be asked in the exam is the citation area here so you've got your citations in there. If you add a new source, if you pick up that one, this is where you add citations that you want to include in your document. So you've got lots of information here. Now, they don't really do this in the um, exam, but I have put some in. So if I go to manage citations, there's a few in there that I've added, and they're just made up ones that I've put in, and I've just... Um, pop them in here and they're the ones that you will see dropping down here. So if we were going to do as you've done here, I'm going to come down. If I wanted to put some citations into my document, let's put one there. So that's how you drop them in, depending on what you want to cite. They might ask you to do that in the exam. And then also they may ask you to create a bibliography. So in order to do this, just delete that. 
Let's do one at the end here. You go into your bibliography, insert one, and there you go. And you've got different styles of bibliography as well. Got Harvard, Chicago, APA is what we're using. Okay, so that's the citations that you're going to drop into your document, your quoting, author. There's probably a lot more to it, as you know, when you go into the actual managing them. Uh, if we double, double click on this one, if we edit, you can see you can put a lot more information in them. So for the exam syllabus, it's about popping them in or putting a bibliography style, dropping it into the document, no more than that. Okay. If we just um, come back to here again, um, into our files, we're going to open up next the table of contents. So table of contents, the whole point is that we can drop a table of contents in automatically. It's one of the automatic features. We go on to the references, there's lots more. So here's our table of contents here. And we always use the customised table of contents, not the set templates. OK, so if you hover on there again, you can see it tells you what it does. So as long as you use styles and everything in your document, if we bring up the styles on the home tab. You can see that that's a style. That's a style. OK, and that's a style. So we've got styles in our document, which is what's needed when you're going to use an automated um, table of contents. And you can see here, we can even do it with indexes, cross-references and captions too. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter a line. Let's go bring that down. We're going to pop our table of contents here, align it to the right, bring it down a little bit more, maybe a little bit less space there. So this is where we're going to insert it. So I'll tell you in the exam where they want you to insert it. Then you're going to go into the references, drop that down and go to the custom table of contents. It brings up um, your dialog box where you can set it up accordingly. So the test question will ask you to do certain things. It normally um, asks you to choose leader, tab leader dots of your choice. It wants you to change the format and sometimes it will talk about the levels. Always do the tab leader dots last because if you change the format, your tab leaders can sometimes disappear because they don't have them built in. Um, so it might be show four levels, classic and tab leaders I want like that. And you can see the example of what it's going to look like and OK. And then what happens is it drops it in automatically. And you can see that if you do a control and a click, it will take you to the introduction. Uh, and page three on there, control and click, it takes you to there. So they're great features and they're little hyperlinks. So they're all done automatically. The other thing it may ask you in the exam is to move something and then update the table of contents. So if we moved this onto the second page, the so control and enter in front of history at the top of it, it's now on page two, whereas our table of contents still has it on page one. So if you right click and update the field, it will say to you in the exam if it wants it entire. In this case, it's just the page numbering. So we can use the update page numbering only, okay. And you can see that it now has automatically changed everything to meet that. If you made a change to some of the formatting, though, that's when you might be asked to use the entire. So if I change these headings, let's highlight the first one, go into my home and my styles again. And it's this one here. If I drop that down. I can pick up all instances. Do you remember select all instances? We had this in our styles demo, if you did watch it. So I've picked them all up and I'm going to modify them all. And I'm going to put numbers on them. So if I go through my format button onto the numbering, and I'm going to put a one, two, three format in front of them. OK, and you can see this is how they look. And OK. So they've all changed, but table of contents hasn't. So if I update the field and do the entire, 
okay then they will change another reason for change using the entire is if you change the, the type of style it'd have to be done that way as well so with regard to table of contents and it comes up in the exam it's about inserting it in a particular place and then you may need to make some changes to it and update accordingly so quite straightforward and close that one i'm going to move on to uh, the third one bookmarks so bookmark can be assigned to a bit of text a graphic um, and it allows you to jump around quite a large document quite easily using these links. If you go into the insert tab, you can see the bookmark feature there. So if we click on that, I've actually got some bookmarks I've included into my document. I've added them in. First of all, let's see what they do. So we've got conclusion. Let's click on our go to and it jumps to our conclusion heading. Senses jumps to our senses heading and our sharp pick jumps to our pick. So it's quite useful for big documents to get around if you want to find particular things. Let's delete these and then I'll show you how to create them. So that's how you delete them in an exam. You click on them and delete them and close if they ask you to. If they ask you to create some, let's do our let's go through and do our sharp pick first. Click on it, bookmark. Okay, call it what you're going to call it. I'm going to call it a shark underscore pick because you can't use spaces between words and add. Then I'm going to go down to my senses heading, bookmark, and I'm going to call it senses. So it overwrites the previous thing. And then I go down to my conclusion. And do one for there as well. And add. If I had something that had more than one word, body form, I have to make sure that I highlight the whole thing and then put body form in with an underscore or something like that. You can't just click at the front of it or just the one word when you bookmark. It has to be particularly what they state okay so just be aware of that then you can go into the bookmark and you can go to and they work quite well as you can see and if they ask to delete one click on it and delete it from the group and okay so that's bookmarks covered it's quite straightforward the thing that goes with bookmarks are cross-referencing so it takes it another step further so if we open up cross-referencing number four and I've got an example here of a few different things. I'm going to just bring it down slightly. This number here is a field, hyperlink field. And it jumps to um, the page number of where the bookmark is. So it does it automatically. So if we look at the bookmarks, let's have a look at insert and in here, we've got some bookmarks set up. So that's what it's jumping to. So they've obviously got to be in there in the first place. So you can have a cross-reference that control and clicks um, straight to there, but it automatically puts in things like page numbers. You can see it up here, creating references to the items, uh, headings, bookmarks, captions, and it can give you the page number, the heading text, the bookmark text. There's lots of features. There's two areas. Let's go to the first one. Let's delete that one. We're looking for bookmark and page number. So let's delete it. Leave a space there where we're going to insert it and right below bookmarks on the insert tab, there's a cross referencing feature. So when we're looking at this in the exam, we're looking at for a reference type and we're looking at to insert the reference to. So it's going to be in the question. So this one, it wants a, the first one, we're looking for a bookmark. And we were looking for a bookmark page number. And it's going to Elizabeth. So that's what we were doing when we inserted it. So that's the way the question would be. So you look at the question, look at what it's referring, what the reference type is, what it's referring to, and then make sure you selected it correctly there. So if I click on insert now and close, if I hover on it and use control and click, it clicks to the area where Elizabeth is, okay? The second one is about a numbered item and paragraph number. 
So let's delete that. And let's do that one. So into cross reference, we need a numbered item. So we scroll down to find that. There it is, numbered item. It's on one last time, but we could have it on two. So we're going to do paragraph number, we'll click on two, insert and close. And if we put the second one in, control click, oops. And there you go. Okay. Back up to the top. The final one is quite typical, this one here, of an exam question. And what they want you to do is replace what would have been before a normal heading with a hyperlinked heading and heading text. So to put the text of the um, heading in, but make it hyperlinked. So we delete that out. We make sure we've got a space. So in the exam, you might see this sort of scenario where you've actually got a gap and they ask you to place it between the pet's corner heading and the tea room heading. And they might even say on what page, on page one. So you place your cursor first into cross-referencing. And what we're asking for this time is a heading and heading text has gone automatic. Then you look for the heading that it's replacing with a hyperlink. There's your insert hyperlink, not mentioned it before. Sometimes they talk about with an inserted hyperlink, but it's on there by default. And then click on insert and close. And now control and click, you will jump to that heading. So it seems a bit tricky, I know but it's not. It's um, just keeping your head, looking at the question, when it talks about cross-references, then you know that you're talking about this feature here. Okay, so place your curse correctly and then do what they ask you to do. Okay? Right, thumb accordingly with a main entry. Um, they can have a main entry, a sub-entry or a cross-reference. And then to remove them, you need to go and remove the mark up curly brackets included code and then update the index to reflect that. OK, so automatic features are always updated to reflect the changes you've made in the document itself. OK, so that's the end of the references bit. Um, I'm not going to say this, just a couple of little things I want to add while you're doing references. So if we come back out again to the main area. You've got this bibliography here. So this is something that you can have a little play with for the citations. Um, you can have a look at it and you can see how you do all the different sources. It's just a little bit of information on that and then you can have a go at it. The multi-levels list, I just want to show you something that's quite quick for your dissertations. If you don't want to get into um, styles, etc. too much and you're a bit worried or you're late, running late on things as we do with dissertations, you can just um, apply these automatic uh, multi-level list headings. So if you do a control and A, if you do this and you apply the headings one, this is this one here, I'm going to do this. You click on there, they all automatically take on the headings. You can see they're all heading one. And then you can use your tabbing to change them to different heading sub-levels, sub-level levels, etc. Okay. So you can change that, you can modify, remember when you do the styles, if you base it on these, you can modify that to be, you could change that to black and you can update that to match the heading or you can do it the other way around where you modify the heading and make them all black. So if I drop that down and I've got, if I've got a few heading in, you can see all the black that's created apart from these. So you can use that, it's quite useful, and I've done a quick one below, just where I've worked it, just to see the sorts of things that you can do. And then that way, you can then put in your automatic table of contents, and so you can see how something might just, that might look. Okay, so it's a really quick way of using features to help you when it comes to speeding up your, your um, dissertations. OK, I'm going to leave that section and I'm going to go on to do the um, week revision that goes with section six referencing um, and I'll do that next. OK, thank you.